How did y'all figure out y'all was Israelites? Your family members? All praise to the Most High. You know what I'm saying? So do you know how to identify that you are an Israelite besides the fact that he just told you? Like if somebody was like, man, you're not an Israelite, could you show them? Like, nah, I am one. Right? All right, I'm going to show y'all. Th the water, the water. Right? Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse number one. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and verse number one. Actually, so like it. Give me Baruch 2 and verse 31st. Right? Give me Baruch 2 and 30. Lord have mercy. Two and thirty. It's the book of Baruch, chapter two and verse thirty. Right. For I knew that they would not hear me. Right. Because it is a stiff-necked people. Right. So the Lord said that He knew His people wouldn't hear Him. Right. Read. But in the land of their captivity. What the Lord say? But in the land of their captivity. Hey, where are we at right now? In the land of their captivity. Right now we in the land of our captivities, right? And the Lord prophesied this saying what? They shall remember themselves. The Lord said we're going to remember ourselves in the land of our captivities. Because you got to understand, when you've been taken captive, they strip your identity. Right? In, the, in that movie Roots, they made sure to let them know that, hey, you're no longer Kuta Kinte. You're Toby. Right? And that's exactly what happened to us. We've been stripped of understanding that we're Israelites in the tribes that we come from, right? And we've been given a nationality by our oppressors, right? Which is black, the color on the crayon box, or African-American, which is the last names of two different white men, right? You had an Italian map maker, right? And you also had a, 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 a general that conquered Africa, right? Give me uh, Deuteronomy 29 and one. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29 and verse one. Right. These are the words of the covenant. Of the what? Of the covenant. Of the covenant. So a covenant is simply a contract, right? These are the words of the covenant. Now, we in 29 because it's telling you what we're about to read before, right? We're going to jump back to 28. The, all of the, everything that we read in 28 are the words of the covenant. Read on. Which Yahweh commanded Moses right? to make with the children of Israel. Read it verbatim. These are the words of the covenant. Right. Which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel right, which in the, the land of Moab. Right, which the Lord commanded the, commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel, right? So everything that we're about to read is pertaining to who the Israelites are, right? Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 1. Let's see what this contract entails. Because with a contract, you got terms and you got conditions, right? right? Read that. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 1. Right. And this shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So the Lord said that if the Israelites listen and keep his commandments that he gives them, right, he's going to bless them and put them on high above every other nation, right? Now, we are the Israelites, and the Lord said that we would do that. But is that so right now? Are we on high above every nation? Absolutely not, right? Read verse 15. Come on, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken. If thou would what? If thou would not hearken. So if we don't listen, read on. Unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments. Right. And his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Give me Hosea 4 and 6. Right, it said all these curses will come upon us and overtake us if we don't listen, right? So what does that mean, right? That means that the Lord is making a contract for us to be his children and him to, and him to be our father, right? And he's saying, if you're going to abide in my house and be my children, you got rules, right? And with these rules, I may reward you for doing the things that I ask you, right? But if you don't do the things that I ask you, I'm going to punish you, right? So the Lord said that curses would be our punishment if we don't keep these commandments that we agreed to when we signed that contract with the sprinkling of blood, right? Read, uh, give me verse 45. Verse 45. Right. Moreover, all these curses. All these what? All, all these, these curses. curses. Right, so the context is curses. Read on. Shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee. Right. Till thou be destroyed. Till what? Till thou, thou be destroyed. destroyed. Read on. Because thou hearkest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Because we didn't listen to the voice of the Lord. Right, read on. To keep his commandments. To do what? To, to keep, keep his, his commandments. commandments. Right and his statutes which he commanded thee and they shall be upon thee for a sign so these curses will be upon us for a sign 
Now, how do I know that that's Brazier du Parc? It's a sign, right? So through these curses, we're going to know who the Israelites are, right? Because it said these curses are for a sign and what else? And for a wonder. Right, something that you've probably wondered about. Read on. And upon thy seed forever. No, just in this time. Forever. Just that generation. Forever. He said forever, right? So the Israelites, right, are going to fit these curses. So that means a nation on earth today, whoever the Israelites are, right? Because no one's calling themselves Israelites right. when you check the box on a, on a job application, right? right? So whoever the Israelites are today, that nation has to fit these curses that we're about to read. Right, read on. Let's get this curse. Come. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. So because the children of Israel didn't serve the Lord for joy with, with joyfulness, right? They weren't happy to serve the Lord. Read on. For the abundance of all things. Because the Lord would have gave them everything. He set you on high above every other nation on the earth. That means what? Everything is subject unto you. Right? right? Read on. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies. Therefore what? Thou yeah, shalt serve thy enemies. So the Lord said, if you don't want to serve me, I'm going to make you serve your enemies. Right? Read on. In hunger. In what? In, in hunger. hunger. Right? And in thirst. And in nakedness. Right? And in one of all things. So if you want food, you want water, right? You want clothes. You want, it said one of all things. You want a house. You want a job. You want a loan. Right? You want a car. It said you're going to have to serve your enemy. What nation of people has to go to their enemy for the want of all things? No matter what you want. You want to drive on the street, you got to get a license, right? If you want to die, you got to get a death certificate. You want to be born, you got to get a birth certificate, right? And one of all things, you have to serve your enemy, right? Read on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. What is that enemy going to do? They shall put, put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. neck. Right? It said that that enemy will put a yoke of iron upon our neck, right? Who put a yoke of iron on our neck? The so-called white man. So that must be our enemy, right? right? Read on. Until he have destroyed. Until he have done what? Until he have destroyed. Now I said that he until he have destroyed us, right? But we still here to this very day. So it can't be talking about a physical destruction, right? right? What's what's the destruction that it's talking about? Give me Hosea four and six. It's the book of Hosea chapter four and verse six. Right. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. What the Lord say? My, My people, people are destroyed, destroyed for a lack, lack of knowledge. So He said the children of Israel are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Right. What is the knowledge that they're missing? Read on. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Right. That thou shalt be no priest to me. Right. Seeing that how thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. What are, what's the knowledge we don't have? Seeing thou hast forgotten, forgotten the law of thy God. God. Right, we've forgotten the law of our God. Right, that's the knowledge that we need in order to be mighty in the sight of these nations. Right, give me the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 4 and verse number 6. Right. Start at verse 5. Read that. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4 and verse 5. And it reads, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. What's the law? I, I have, have taught, taught you statutes and, and judgments. So the Lord said, Behold, I've taught you the law of God. Right, read on. Even as the Lord my God commanded me. Right. That ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Read on. Keep therefore and do What the Lord say? Keep therefore and do them. Read on. For this is your wisdom. For this is your what? For this, For this is, is your wisdom. wisdom. Knowledge and wisdom are synonymous, right? Read on. And your understanding. And your what? And, and your understanding. Now that's true knowledge when you have the wisdom and the understanding. Read on. In the sight of the nation. In the what? In the, In the sight, sight of the, of the nation. nation. Read on. Which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Right, so the law of God is our understanding in the sight of these nations. And the reason that they look at us as next to nothing as dumb niggas is because we don't keep the laws of God. If we kept the laws of God, they would have no choice but to look at us and say, damn, that's the mightiest nation, right? Because the Lord ordained us to be on top of them, right? So if we were keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments, hey, we would be on top of them right now. Hey, we would be ruling the earth, right? And that's ultimately what the gospel is, uh, uh, is the, the kingdom of heaven being restored back unto the Israelites when Christ returns back to the earth, right? That's exactly what's going to happen. Right, but nevertheless, nevertheless, I'm gonna show y'all two more curses of how we know that we're Israelites, right? Because the first curse was what? You have to serve your enemy in the want of all things, 
right? And that he's going to put a yoke of iron upon you on it. Now, who I, who, what nation of people can identify with that curse? Our people, right? Give me verse 54. Let's, let's look at another curse. Verse 54. Right? So that the man that is tender among you. Oh, Salakia, you. Keep, reading, keep reading on that on that curse. Go back to uh, 40, uh, 48. Yeah, 48. Come. And, and he... Therefore shall I serve thy enemies, right. which the Lord shall send against thee. There's more on this. In hunger, and in thirst, right. and in nakedness, and in one of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Right, read on. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. So the Lord's going to bring a nation against us from far. This same enemy that is spoke about with the yoke of iron that we would have to serve for the one of all things. Right, this nation that's going to be, uh, this nation that's against us from far, read on. From the end of the earth, right? as swift as the eagle flies. What did the Lord liken that nation to? As swift, swift as, as the eagle flies. Now, what's the national bird for America? An eagle, right? So the Lord's kind of trying to send the signs. He said, hey, this nation that I'm going to bring against you, right? They're going to be as swift as the eagle. And what? Hey, America exalts the bald eagle, right? They love that thing. It's on the back of your dollar bill. It's on, it's on uh, what's it called? Um them uh monuments and uh things of that nature at, in in the government whenever you walk through there they, they got the damn the eagle with the thing on there right they exalt the eagle read on as swift as the eagle fly right a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand and we weren't speaking english right the so-called hispanics weren't speaking spanish that came from spain right which is what europeans read on a nation of fierce countenance. Hey, what? A, a nation, nation of fierce, fierce countenance. countenance. Now, it's not talking about, you know, the so-called white man's kind of scary, right? Because we don't fear the so-called white man. Hey, I'm, hey, hey. I'm sure y'all don't either, right? So what is it talking about, read on? Which shall not regard the person of the old. Meaning that, hey, they'll kill George Floyd, read on. Nor show favor to the young. And they'll kill Trayvon Martin. Damn. They're not going to show no favor, right? Hey, they'll, they'll put a 60-year-old man, he's going to pick cotton. Hey, the six-year-old kid, hey, he was picking kite, right? This is that na that nation of fierce countenance that has no regard for the person of old or the person of young. They got no respect, right? Jump, give me uh, verse 54. Let's, let's get another curse. Verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you right. and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother. So it says the Israelite man, as a curse, the Lord said, your eyes is going to be evil towards your brother, right? Another Israelite man. Read on. And toward the wife of his bosom. And toward, or, and toward his women of his nation. Right? So on one hand, you got what? Black on black crime. Right? You got black on brown crime. Right? Hey, if a man even looks at you at the gas station, right, the first thing in your mind is, is uh, hate before his love. Right? The first thing in his mind is hate before his love. Right? Secondly, read on. And toward the wife of his bosom. And toward the wife of his bosom, his women. Right? Who's, who's, who's chiefly known for pimping out their women? Calling them B words and H words, exploiting them in their music videos, right? Hey, even the music we rap about is either talking about exploiting the women of our nation or killing uh, the men of our nation, right? We're the only ones that do that, read on. And toward the remnant of his children. It says he gonna have an evil eye toward his children. And you know, they say the so-called black man is known for what? Leaving his children, right? Read. Which he shall leave. What the Bible say? Which, Which he shall leave. That's an explanation for why our, our households are so fatherless at a at a high innumerable rate, right? Because what? Hey, the Lord put a curse upon our nation. They said as a nation, they're going to have fatherless homes. As a nation, they're going to have an evil eye towards their brother. As a nation, they're going to have to serve their enemy for the want of all things, Teacher. right? Give me verse uh, 68, right? Huh. Let's get this last curse. Give me Exodus 20 and 2. Verse 68. And uh, give me Exodus 14 and 16. And the Lord shall bring thee into Let Egypt again. Let me see Exodus 14 and 16. With ships. With what? With, with ships. ships. Right, so it says the Lord's going to bring the Israelites into Egypt again with ships, right? Give me Exodus 20 and 2. It's the book of Exodus. That's not what I Chapter want. 20 and verse 2. Pick it up. I am the Lord thy God. Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Right. Out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is synonymous with the house of bondage. Right. So when the Lord is talking about sending us into Egypt again. Right. He's talking about slavery. Right. Because the Israelites just left that physical land of Egypt. Right. From slavery. The Lord delivered them by the hand of Moses. Moses told Pharaoh, let my people go. 
So when they hear the word Egypt, they're thinking of the captivity they were just in, right? Not the physical land, right? Because that wouldn't make sense. Why is the Lord saying, well, I'm going to just send you, as a curse, I'm going to just send you to a land, right? That doesn't make sense. It's obviously talking about what? The bondage that they were in, right? Read on. You see? Right. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the, where, where, by the way whereof I spake unto thee, right? thou shalt see it no more again. Right, and previously in Exodus, Moses told them that they were not going to see that physical, those physical Egyptians again, right? So he's saying, remember how I told you you wouldn't see those people again? That's how we know it's not talking about that place. It's got to be talking about a, 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 a bondage or a captivity, right? Read on. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Right. For bondmen and bond women, and no man shall buy you. So it said we were going to go into slavery on ships, and when we got to uh, when we got to that place, right, we would be sold for slave men and slave women, and no man will buy us. Meaning that word in Hebrew means redeem, meaning no man's going to be able to bring us out of it, such as Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, right, uh, Marcus Garvey, any of the Barack Obama, any of these people that are supposed to you know, lift the so-called black man out of the state that it's in, all of those have come to naught, right? And till this very day, we're about to enter 2023, so-called, right? What's going to happen? Hey, we still fighting for civil rights to this day, right. right? So what it's talking about is what? Hey, the Lord has to come. Give me uh, Isaiah 59 and verse uh, 20, I believe. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 30, right? That re the redemption has to come through the hand of the Most High God. It's not going to come by the hand of a man. Right? Isaiah 59. Con, read 20. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, and verse 20. Right? Oh. And the Redeemer. And the what? And the Redeemer. Who is Christ? And, and the Redeemer. Redeemer. Right? So the one that's going to redeem us, right, is talking about Christ. No other earthly, fleshly man is going to be able to redeem us. We can't call upon the name of Martin Luther King in the name that he's going to deliver us out of that captivity, right? Out of the hands of the so called white man, right? We had to call upon Christ. Read. Shall come to Zion, right? And unto them that turn from transgression. That do what? That, that turn from transgression in Jacob. Now, what is transgression? Give me First John chapter uh, three and verse number four, right? Because this is the whole reason why we're showing y'all y'all are Israelites, right? Because what? The Redeemer's gonna come for those who have turned from transgression, right? Remember, these curses that we're in is because what? We transgressed the Lord, right? So the whole point that we're trying to get is what? Let's figure out what transgression is first. Read that. It's the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Right? Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Right? For sin. For is, what? For, for sin. sin. For sin. Read on. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the transgression of the law, right? So what do you have to turn from if you're turning from transgression? You have to turn from sin. Now, what is sin? That's doing opposite of the law of God that he gave to us as an inheritance, right? So read uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30 and verse 1. Read out. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse. Now, we just we just told y'all the blessing, right? These things just came upon y'all. Y'all got the blessing. Hey, man, if we kept the commandments, right, we would be set on high above uh, every nation. If we keep the commandments right now, we would be set on high above every nation, right? And said, and the curse, right? We, we just read y'all a couple of curses. Right out of the book of Deuteronomy 28. That is the chief book that you can uh, identify who the Israelites are. Remember that. That's the book of blessings and curses. When you read Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 all the way down to 14 are the blessings. Verse 15 all the way down to 68 are the curses. And that's how you identify that you're an Israelite. So if somebody asks you, go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15 and read those curses on down. And see who identifies with them, right? So it said, when you when these things have come upon you, the blessing and the curse, read on. Which I have set before thee. Right. And thou shalt call them to mind. And what the Lord say? And thou shalt call, call them to mind. mind. Now y'all are calling these things to mind, right? Read on. Among all the nations. Um, in all of these places, right? Because we got Israelites in Puerto Rico. We got Israelites in Cuba. We got Israelites in the Dominican Republic, in Haiti, in Guatemala, the Panama, right. the, the, the islands, That's right? Israelites in all of these places where the Lord has driven us, read on. Whether the Lord thy God had driven thee, right? And shall return unto the Lord thy God. And shall what? And shall return unto the Lord thy God. And they were going to return to the Lord, right? Read on. 
and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. The Lord said to obey his voice according to all that he's commanded us. Read on. Thou and thy children. Meaning you and your whole household. It can't just be you that's a repentant Israelite that's and right. your daughter still wearing uh, damn spandex pants with a crop top. Or your wife still walking out the house with nothing on, right? It's you and your household. Because ultimately, when you understand that you're the man of the house, hey, everybody that abides in that house is your responsibility. So their salvation is your responsibility. Read on. With all thy heart and with all thy soul. Right. That then the Lord thy God. That what? That then the Lord thy God. So once our nation returns to the Lord and keeps his commandments, the Lord said that then he will what? Turn thy captivity. What's going to happen when we put the white man in slavery? Turn, Turn thy captivity. captivity. What's going to happen when we're ruling the earth? Turn, Turn thy captivity. captivity. What's going to happen when Christ returns? Turn thy captivity. That's when the Lord is going to turn our captivity. So the Lord is not, the Lord, we're not waiting on the heavenly father and his son to come back. Right? They're waiting on us to come back to the heavenly father. That's right. Once we come back, hey, the Lord is going to fight for us. That's right. right? Once we come back to him, hey, the Lord is going to, uh, 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 Deliver us out of the captivity that we're in. That's right. right. Give me the book of uh, Revelation chapter 13 and verse number 9. Let me show you all that real quick, right? Read that out. Because we got to understand, I, I don't know if y'all been brought up in Christianity or if y'all have been brought up in those teachings, right? But those teachings tell us that, you know, everyone is equal. Anyone can be saved. God loves everybody. Mm. Right, but Rev give me Revelation 2 and 25 as well, right? We're going to kind of cut that understanding because we have to understand from the beginning of the book to the end of the book, it's all about the Israelites and it's addressed to the Israelites. It's only addressed to these people, right? It's not for everybody, right? Read that. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 9. Right? Yo. This is the last book of the Bible. After Christ has died and resurrected, so it's no... Well, Christ came, right? Christ already came, right? Read on. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Right. He that leadeth into captivity. He that what? He that leadeth into captivity. So who led us into captivity, right? It wasn't just the so-called white man, but every other nation, right? The Africans had us in slavery. The Arab man had us in slavery, right? Read on. Shall go into captivity. All of those nations have to go into captivity. I want two in uh, 25, right? All of those nations have to go into captivity because they led us into captivity. And that's only righteous of the Lord, right? Hey, the all-powerful, most mighty Lord, right? If he, if he sent our people into slavery and we're subject unto this hell, it would be an unrighteous thing for them to just get away with it. Well, now you can just, anybody can repent, right? And now anyone can get the kingdom of heaven. Even though, you know, y'all kind of threw these people's children, the damn alligators, hung them on trees for no reason, all kind, you know what I'm saying? That would be unrighteous of the Lord to not have some type of get back or some 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 type of reparation, right? Read on. He that killeth with the sword. What happened to Trayvon Martin? He that killeth with the sword. What happened to George Floyd? He that killeth with the sword. What's going to happen to those people that killed them? Must be killed with the sword. They must be killed with the sword. Right? That's what the Lord said. Right? Read that. Revelation 2 and 25. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 25. Right? But that, but that which ye have already, right? hold fast till I come. Now, this is Christ speaking. Right? Read. And he that overcometh and keepeth my word. And keepeth what? And keepeth my word. And keepeth what? And keepeth my word. Right? Until the end. To him will I give power over the nation. To him will he do what? Give power over the nation. So Christ said, he that endureth to the end and keepeth my works, which means the heavenly father's law, statutes, and commandments. If you keep these commandments, right? And obviously if he's speaking, you have to have your faith in Christ, mm -hmm. right? He said he, to him, will he give power over the nations, all of these nations, right? Read on. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. What the Lord say? And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. The Lord said, hey, Christ said he's going to give you the ability to rule over the nations with a rod of iron if you keep his law, statutes, and commandments and have faith in him. Read on. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Right. Even as I received of my father, and I would give him. Right. It says, it says as the vessels of a pot so they be broken into pieces, man. Right? So these are the things that we receive, right? If you if you want to receive eternal life, if you want to come into the faith of Yahweh Shah, which is who the world calls Jesus, right? His real name in the Paleo ancient Hebrew 
is Yahweh Shai because the letter J wasn't invented until the 1500s. So they wasn't walking around calling him Jesus, right? His name was Yahweh Shai, which would be Joshua in the, in the Hebrew, right? Huh. Give me the book of uh, Proverbs chapter uh, 28 and verse number 13, right? Because now that y'all understand that y'all are Israelites, and now y'all understand why our people are in the state that we are in, what do y'all what do y'all need to do? Give me uh, Mark uh, one and fifteen. What do you think y'all need to do? All praise to the Most High, right? All praise to the Most High. That's exactly right. Matthew, Mark one and fifteen. It's the Book of Mark, chapter one and verse fifteen. Right. And saying, the time is fulfilled. Right. And the kingdom of God is at hand. What the Lord say? The kingdom of God is at hand. Hey, the kingdom of God is at hand. If y'all look around right now, this this kingdom, the so-called white man's kingdom, is on its way out. Right? It's falling as we speak. When we look, you look at you look at uh damn the USD currency trade, everything, man, it's falling right now. Right? The so-called white man's kingdom is going to shit right before our very eyes, right? That's why I said the kingdom of God is at hand. Meaning what? Hey, the wicked are on their way out and the righteous are about to begin to rule, right? right? It's time to do what? Romans 13, uh, Romans 13 and verse uh, 8, 11. Come, read that. It's the book of Romans, chapter 13 and verse 11. Right. And it reads, and that, knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of sleep. Read it again, King. And that. Knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Hey, what do these brothers have to do? It is wake out of sleep. Right, it's time to wake out of sleep. Because we've been asleep far too long. That's what Christianity does. Right, Christianity is a docile drug. It kind of puts you to sleep, rocks you back and forth, and now you're just sleeping, kind of going with whatever the white man say. You don't even know it. Right, but we, now we're waking out of sleep. We're waking up. Right, read on. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe and the salvation is nearer than when we believe meaning christ is on his way back right read uh give me give me proverbs 28 and 13. it's the book of proverbs chapter 28 and verse 13. Verse right two. he that covered his sins shall not prosper what the lord say he that, he that covered his sins shall, shall not prosper he that covereth his sins shall not prosper meaning what ain't no longer can y'all continue to just keep sinning and trying to cover them up right it says he's not, that man's not going to prosper, especially in the day of vengeance. Read on. But whoso confess it and forsake it. Give me Proverbs chapter 1, the last mercy. verse. Whoso what? Whoso confess it and forsake it. So you have to, have come, right? So you have to confess, meaning repent to the heavenly father and stop doing the things that you were doing, right? Forsake them. So all of those sins that you were doing, you have to stop doing those things, right? Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1 and verse 33. But whoso hearken unto me. Whoso shall, listens to the Lord, read on. Shall dwell safely. Shall what? Shall dwell safely. Right, because which if y'all if y'all don't know, right, in these last days, what's coming to the to America, right, is race rule, race wars, riots, uh uh um lawlessness, all kinds of folly and madness. Pretty soon it's, it's not gonna be a 911 to pick up. Pretty soon your phone's not gonna be able to work to call your homeboy across the street, right? It's going to be every man for themselves. The lights cut off. It's going to be like the damn purge, right? Hey, the so-called white man understands what's coming, right? They know what's coming, and Hollywood always gives you a uh, a visual of what's coming to the, to the earth, right? So the purge, that's real, right? And we have to understand that the only people that are going to make it out of that thing, the only people that are going to be safe are what? Read that again from the top. But who's so harking it? Unto me. So whosoever listens to the Lord, keeping his commandments, having faith in his son, read on. Shall dwell safe. Shall what? Shall dwell safe. Right? Only the men of the Lord. Not not the men with the AK-47s and the damn bunkers and things of that nature. Not saying you can't have guns, right? But not, not the people who are putting their trust in those things are going to dwell safely. But whoso hearkening to the Lord is going to dwell safely. Read on. And shall be quiet from fear of evil. And shall be quiet from fear of evil. So when a white man gets to kicking in the so-called uh, black man's doors, right, with martial law and things of that nature, right, hey, the heavenly father is the one that's going to protect you in that day. That's why it's high time that we repent and come back to him, right? So let me show y'all some commandments that y'all probably aren't keeping that y'all can begin to keep so that you can come back to the Lord, right? Give me the book of Deuteronomy uh, 
to lock you. Give me Exodus 35 and 2. Give me Numbers 15 and 38, Leviticus 11, right, and Leviticus 19. I'm going to show you all a few commandments, right? Yeah, if you're there, go ahead and bring it out. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 35 and verse 2. Commandment number 1. Six days shall work be done. Right. But on the seventh day, there shall be to you an holy day. Hey, what? A holy, holy day. day. Now, holy means separate or set apart, right? So this day is separate from the other six days. Read on. A Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Right. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. So on the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day of the week, you can't do no work. Right. It's a, and the Lord not playing about that. Right. He said shall be put to death. That's a pretty grievous transgression against them. Right. Read on. Come. You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitation upon the Sabbath day. And you can't kindle the fire. Right. So it's no cooking on the Sabbath day. On the Sabbath day, you're supposed to uh, either prepare food before the sun goes down. Right. And eat that if you want to have a warm meal. And then the following day. You know what I'm saying? You have something prepared that you can eat out of the refrigerator, such as a chicken salad or uh, chicken sandwiches, stuff like that, that you don't need to necessarily cook. And then once the sun goes down for dinner, hey, you good to freely, you know, do whatever you need to do, right? Give me uh, Nehemiah um, 10 and 31, right? Do y'all know what day the seventh day is? Saturday. Saturday. All That's praise right. to the Most High. Right? And Saturday... Salakia. And Saturday starts at sundown on Friday. It's not It's not at 12 because nothing changed. It's when the sun goes down that begins a new day and ends the previous day. Right? This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 10 and verse 31. Right? And if the people of the land bring well or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell. I'm almost done, Kings. I'm almost done. That we would not buy it of them. Right? On the Sabbath day. Or on the holy day. Right, so on the Sabbath day, you cannot buy or sell because that means someone's doing work. Right, if you're selling, you're doing work. And if you're buying from somebody, that person is doing work. Right, so the Heavenly Father said you can't buy or sell on those days. Do y'all understand that? So the seventh day of the week is on Saturday. It begins at Friday sundown because the sun, the sun going down pursuing the Genesis 1 and 5 is what begins and ends a day. It's not 12 a.m., right? So sundown... Friday, Sabbath, no buying, selling, cooking, or work, right? That's the first commandment, Numbers 15 and 38. It's the book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. Read seven, start at 7, 37, it's a lot. Verse 37. Right. And the Lord spake unto Moses. What, and who? And the Lord spake unto Moses. Right, it says the Lord spake unto Moses. Because what you're going to hear is that these are Moses' laws, right? That's what, that's what they're going to say, these are Moses' laws, Right. But it's in almost every instance, it tells you that the Lord spoke these things to Moses. Moses is simply a messenger. Right, read on. Saying, speak unto the children of Israel. So the Lord is telling him to say these things. So if the Lord is telling him, these aren't his words, these are the Lord's words. Read on. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So y'all have to put fringes in the borders of your garments. If you look at every brother out here, they have fringes on the borders of their garments. Right, read on. Throughout their generations. No, just in that time. Throughout their generations. Right? Throughout their generations. Read on. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. A ribbon of blue. And y'all see, so the fringe can be any color, right? You can blue, green, red, whatever. But the, the ribbon on top of it has to be blue. Right? Read on. And it shall be upon, up, Salakia. And it shall be unto you for a fringe. This is why we wear them. That ye may look upon it. That you may look upon it. And remember all the commandments of the Lord. And remember the commandments of the Lord. Read on. And do them. And that ye seek not after your own heart. Right. And your own eyes after which ye used to, to a horn. Right. To go a horn. So the Lord said that you have to wear the fringes so you can remember to keep his commandments. Right. Is that something grievous that y'all brothers can't do? That's easy. Right. Just get you some fringes. Right. If y'all need, uh, if y'all need information on how to receive the fringes, the flyer that we're going to give to y'all, y'all can either DM the Instagram or you can uh, email the email that's on the paper, right? DM in the Instagram will probably get you a faster response, right? Um, so you got to get fringes on the borders of your garments, right? That's commandment number two. Leviticus 11, right? Start at one. 
the book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 1. Right. And the Lord spake unto Moses. So it said the Lord spake. Read on. And to Aaron, saying unto them. Right. Speak unto the children of Israel. Right. Saying, these are the beasts. And y'all are the children of Israel, right? Right. It said, these are the beasts. Read on. Which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. So the Lord gave the children of Israel a specific, not not necessarily specific, right? But he he's given an outline of the, the beast that he made for man to eat and the beast that he made for other things. Because contrary to popular belief, every beast was not made to be eaten, right? Because a man is a beast. You wouldn't eat a man, right? So it's certain things that you can and cannot eat. Everything's not meant to be put in your, in your body to be consumed. Jump to verse number seven. This is what our people have a hard time consuming. This is where Muslims get their doctrine from. Cause they read the Torah, which means the law of God, right? So it's not, it's not no Muslim stuff, right? Understand they got that from us. Read that. Come, verse seven. And the swine, which is pork, though he divide the hoof, right, and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, right? He is unclean to you. He is what? He, he is, is unclean, unclean to you. It says he is unclean to you, right? So pork you cannot eat. The Lord said you can't eat that thing. Read on. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. Not supposed to eat it. And their carcass shall ye not touch. You can't even touch the dead pig. So if they put bacon on your burger, you can't remove the bacon and eat the burger. Right? You got to get a whole new burger. They put pepperoni on your pizza. You can't remove the pepperoni. You got to get a whole new pizza. Right? And just tell them you got a pork allergy. Right? Jump to verse 9. Verse 9. These shall ye eat of that are in the waters. Right? Whatsoever have fins and scales. These shall you eat that are all in the waters, right? So this is about the detail what you can eat that comes out of the water. Read on. In the waters, in the seas, and the rivers shall ye eat. Read it again. I... These shall ye eat of that are in the waters. Right. Whatsoever have fins and scales. Whatsoever have fins and scales, right? So that's the prerequisites. It needs to have fins and scales. If it doesn't have both of them, right, then it's unclean, right? So a catfish has fins, no scales. It's unclean, right? A, um, a lobster has no fins or scales, right? A crab has no fins, no scales. Shrimp, no fins, no scales. Oysters, no fins, no scales. Seaweed, no fins, no scales. Because it said of any living thing in the water. Sea moss, no fins, no scales. All of those things, read on. It's going to tell you. In the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, sh them shall ye eat. Right. And all that have not fins and scales. So if it doesn't have those things. In the seas, and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any, any living, living thing, thing which is in the waters. Right. They shall be an abomination unto you. They shall be an abomination unto you. Right. right? One more, one more, one more commandment. Right. Give me Leviticus 19. Come the book of Leviticus. Start at 11. Chapter 19 and verse 11. Right. Yo. Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither love one to another. What the Lord say? Ye shall not steal, steal neither deal, deal falsely, falsely, neither lie one to another. So you can't steal from your people. You cannot deal falsely with your people and lie. All praise to the Most High. Hey, y'all check out the, uh, y'all scan the QR codes and subscribe to the YouTube channels, right? Hey, Kwame Asherala. Kwame Asherala. Kwame Asherala. Kwame Asherala. Hey, them brothers understood that they were Israelites, man. All praise to the Most High. What's going on, family? Who, who teaching? Come, bring, uh, I'm going to pass it on to the next mighty speaker, man. Hey, Kwame Asherala. Kwame Asherala. Kwame Asherala. Kwame Asherala.